Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into the define phase of Six Sigma, the first step in the DMAC process. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refresh your knowledge, understanding this phase is crucial for successful project outcomes. Let's get started. The define phase sets the foundation for your Six Sigma project. It involves clearly defining the problem, project goals, and customer requirements. With a solid start, improvements will be practical, so this phase is vital. To begin with, identify the problem you're trying to solve. Gather your team and work collaboratively to pinpoint the issue. To map out the process and clarify the scope, you might use tools like a SIPOC diagram for suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, and customers. Next, define the project's goals. What are you hoping to achieve? This could be anything from reducing cycle time to improving product quality. Make sure your objectives are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, often called SMART goals. Another critical step is understanding the voice of the customer or VOC. Gathering feedback from customers helps you focus on what truly matters to them. This could involve surveys, interviews, or focus groups, ensuring customer needs and expectations are captured. Creating a project charter is essential during the define phase. This document outlines the problem statement, project goals, scope, timeline, and roles and responsibilities. It's a roadmap that keeps the team aligned and guides the project from start to finish. Remember stakeholder analysis. Identifying stakeholders and their interests will help manage expectations and secure buy-in. Regular communication with stakeholders keeps them updated and engaged throughout the project. Finally, it's essential to consider the financial impact. Perform a cost-benefit analysis to understand the project's potential return on investment. This analysis can justify the project and ensure resources are allocated wisely. And that's the define phase in a nutshell. By taking the time to define your project thoroughly, you're setting yourself up for success in the later phases of Six Sigma. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the measure phase from the DMAC series. The measure phase is crucial in the DMAC methodology, which stands for define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. In the measure phase, we aim to collect reliable data to understand a process's performance and pinpoint areas for improvement. But what exactly does this entail? Let's explore. The heart of the measurement phase is determining how well the current process performs. This is done by collecting meaningful data that clarifies how much variation exists within the current processes. Precise data collection is vital to start. Any decisions or conclusions drawn in subsequent phases could be flawed without accurate data. The first step is to develop a detailed measurement plan. This ensures you capture data correctly and consistently. Define what will be measured, identify the necessary tools and methods for data collection, and ensure every team member understands their role. Focusing on areas that significantly impact customer satisfaction and business goals is critical. In other words, selecting critical to quality characteristics, or CTQs, reflects the most important aspects of the customer's needs. Next, gather baseline data. This is your starting point for measuring improvements later. For accurate insights, it's vital to collect qualitative and quantitative data. This often includes customer feedback, process cycle times, or defect rates. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. High quality data is crucial for meaningful analysis later. Remember, data integrity is crucial. Faulty or biased measurements can lead to misguided analysis. Ensure measurement systems are validated and capable of providing reliable data. Once you've collected sufficient data, verify the measurement system's accuracy, measurement system analysis, MSA, using tools like Gauge r and &R, which evaluate the precision of your measurement tools and procedures. After validating the measurement system, summarize the data to visualize the current state of the process. Tools like Pareto charts, histograms, and control charts can reveal patterns, trends, or areas of concern within collected data. 
These visual representations allow us to communicate findings effectively and build a solid foundation for the analyze phase where you'll look for root causes of process inefficiencies. In conclusion, the measure phase involves laying robust data groundwork. It informs decision making and sets the stage for quality improvement and process excellence. In upcoming episodes, we'll unpack the analyze phase. Welcome to our deep dive into the analyze phase of Six Sigma. This is where the rubber meets the road in our journey to process excellence. The analyze phase is the third step in the DMAC methodology, which stands for define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. During this phase, we focus on identifying the root causes of problems and understanding why defects occur. The primary goal of the analyze phase is to pinpoint the underlying reasons for inefficiencies and variabilities within a process. We begin with hypothesis development. By generating theories about potential causes, we pave the way for data-driven validation. Tools like fishbone diagrams, also called cause and effect diagrams, failure mode and effects analysis, FMEA, are instrumental in mapping out possibilities. Next, we delve into data analysis. This involves statistical methods to test our hypotheses. Techniques such as hypothesis testing, regression analysis, correlation studies, and ANOVA are often at the forefront. These help in understanding relationships between variables, which is crucial for pinpointing root causes precisely. However, it's not just about crunching numbers. Effective root cause analysis requires intuitive thinking alongside statistical rigor. We continuously probe, ask why, and peel back the layers until we identify the core issue. Root cause validation follows, ensuring that our findings are not mere assumptions but are backed by solid evidence. Moreover, this phase often employs Pareto charts, allowing us to prioritize issues based on their impact. Remember, the goal is not to tackle every problem at once, but to focus on the few critical issues that significantly affect performance. By doing so, the analyze phase sets the stage for targeted improvements. Communication is key throughout this process. Findings are shared with all stakeholders to ensure everyone is aligned and understands the insights gathered. Clarity in communication aids in garnering support for the subsequent improvement phase. To wrap up, the analyze phase is about uncovering the truth hidden in data. It's where we transition from measuring the problem to understanding its cause. Our findings here are essential for crafting impactful improvement strategies. Welcome to the improve phase. Improve phase is the fourth step in the DMAG process, which stands for define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. This phase is about finding and implementing solutions to the problems identified during the previous steps, ultimately improving your business process. The goal is to brainstorm, assess, and choose solutions that are not only effective, but also sustainable. During the improve phase, the team generates a list of possible solutions that address the root causes of the issues uncovered in the analyze phase. Creativity and open-mindedness are crucial here, as team members are encouraged to think outside the box to identify innovative solutions. Next, these ideas are analyzed using various tools and techniques, such as brainstorming sessions, PU matrix matrix, cost-benefit analysis, multi-criteria decision analysis, and simulations to evaluate their feasibility and effectiveness. The team prioritizes solutions that offer the most significant impact with minimal resources and time. Once a solution or multiple solutions are chosen, it's time for pilot testing. This involves implementing the solutions on a small scale to monitor their performance and identify any potential drawbacks or areas for refinement. The insights gained during the pilot test are instrumental in optimizing the solution for full-scale implementation. Communication during this phase is critical. Regular updates and feedback sessions with stakeholders ensure everyone is aligned and supportive of the changes. It's essential to document each process step thoroughly, from brainstorming sessions to pilot test results, as this information could be valuable for future projects. Upon successful pilot tests, full-scale implementation can commence. 
This involves rolling out the solution across the organization and addressing any emerging challenges promptly. Ensuring the staff is adequately trained and all necessary resources are available is key to a smooth transition. Common tools and techniques used during the improved phase are experiment design, process mapping, Kaizen, failure mode and effect analysis, FEMA, and simulation and modeling. The improved phase is pivotal as it transforms theoretical analyses into tangible changes, directly impacting the organization's efficiency and effectiveness. Embracing flexibility, innovation, and collaboration can lead to successful outcomes that benefit the organization. Welcome to the control phase. This is the fifth step in the DMAC process. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control, employed for process improvement. As you might guess, the control phase is about maintaining and sustaining the improvements achieved during the previous phases. It's ensuring that the enhanced processes continue to operate smoothly and consistently produce the desired results over the long term. In the control phase, a series of vital tasks comes into play. It starts with standardized operating procedures, SOPs. The new procedures and improvements are documented here and updated process maps or flowcharts are created. This documentation is crucial because it serves as a reference for current and future employees, explaining the new standard procedures and how they should be performed. The next step is to establish control systems. This often involves creating a control plan that outlines the steps needed to maintain and monitor the improved process. One key component is the selection and implementation of control charts. These charts help visually monitor the process performance over time and alert us to any variations or deviations that may arise. Another fundamental task is consistently collecting data. By gathering data on the improved process, teams can ensure that the changes made continue to meet the required performance standards and enable swift correction if needed. Visual management tools display these data to the team to ensure everyone understands the current performance. Another crucial element is training. Employees involved in the process must be thoroughly trained on the new standards and control systems. This training guarantees that everyone is on the same page and understands their role in maintaining the improved process. Communication plays a significant role here as well. Regular updates and feedback loops are essential to keep everyone informed and involved. Moreover, the control phase also involves setting up a response plan. This plan includes actions to be executed if the process shows signs of returning to its previous ineffective state. By having a predetermined response, teams can react quickly and efficiently, minimizing disruption and preventing any slip in quality. Lastly, the control phase focuses on continuous improvement. Even with control measures, there's always room for further enhancement. The aim is to sustain the improvements and look for additional opportunities to refine and perfect the processes. Organizations remain agile, efficient, and competitive by embracing a continuous improvement culture. Other tools like Statistical Process Control SPC and Mistake Proofing Pokeyoke, are used during the control phase. That wraps up our exploration. This is Kevin from Infinilian. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for updates. See you soon.